Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Hey, let me ask you a really, uh, really good question. Have you, uh, have you ever come to a place in your life where you almost quit? That's a good question. Have you ever come to a place in your life where you almost quit? For example, when I first started uh, Elevate Church, uh, before we even opened the church, I almost felt like quitting. And, uh, and, and the reason being was because the challenges and the struggles and the trials were just, they were way too much. It's not just open a church and let's, let's, let's do church. It's, it comes with a spiritual battle. Uh, it comes with a lot of discouragement. As a matter of fact, when, when we first started, man, I had a lot of haters uh, before I even got started. I had people that didn't believe in me, people that were very cruel and mean. And, uh, and, and listen, where, where I came from, I was doing just fine. I was uh, uh, already in a, in a mega church, and I was uh, loved by so many people. And, and, man, I had constant, you know, cheerleaders on my team always championing my cause of of ministry and and it was awesome and then God calls me to New Hall California and uh and I'm thinking what the heck is a New Hall and uh and I could remember clearly seven years ago uh sitting uh right across the street from here on the bench that still sits there and uh and as I'm sitting there I had uh disappointment discouragement and uh, I, I felt for a moment, what have I done to my family? How could I have left all the wonderful blessings I had to come to a place where I'm not even loved, I'm not even accepted, and, uh, and the stress was real, and the, the finances were piling up, and, and all kinds of things were happening. But I, I want to remind you that you, though you may be in a place that may be filled with trials and troubles and challenges, you have to know right now that your life is connected to someone else's destiny. Whether you like it or not, it doesn't matter what kind of platform or what kind of influence you have. Everyone here in this room is connected to someone's destiny. Think about it. Your spouse that you're married to was destiny, right? And so uh, I could also remember when I first got saved, um, it was uh, this December will be 21 years that I've been walking with God. And, uh, and when I first received Christ, it was a challenge because I was an atheist. So, uh, yes, I had an, ingre- an incredible encounter with God, but you're talking about a man for, for you know, 21 years that, that was challenged with believing uh, that there was the existence of, of a greater power than my own. And so it was a challenge, but I can remember being this introvert, um, didn't like people. I, it's funny because I didn't even, I didn't like blacks, whites, or Hispanics, and I'm Hispanic. You know, it's kind of weird. That's, that's strange, right? But I didn't like people very much, and, uh, and, I, and I remember being in the parking lot uh, in church, and because I didn't want to serve in the church, I didn't like talking to people. I did my own thing. I bought my own broom and my own dustpan, and what I would do is on the weekends, I would go to the church, and I'd be in the parking lot every weekend just sweeping up the parking lot, man. Why? I didn't want leadership to come tell me to serve in their church. I just wanted to go to church and leave me alone. Anybody ever feel like that? Just want to just leave me alone. I just want to get a good word. And, just, and, and so I just kept doing this until I finally got caught. But let me tell you something. It really doesn't matter where you're at in life right now. God is going to use every single little thing, big thing, horrible thing, painful thing, suffering thing. God is going to take every trial. God's going to take every mess, everything that maybe w- that was created by, by someone else other than you, but even your own mess, God is going to use it all for his glory, every single bit of it. I can't even, uh, if, if someone would have told me there, if God would have came in, 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 in the form of man right there at that parking lot while I was sweeping, and he would have told me, Hey, listen, Mauricio, you're going to be a pastor one day, but here's what you're going to go through. And I've been through some stuff. You're talking about cancer. You name it. Every kind of attack I've been through, I would be like, hell to the no, I don't want to do that, right? But God God will use everything. God will not waste your pain. God will use it for something so much greater. That's the kind of God that we serve. And so I don't know where you're at. Maybe some of you, you're ready to quit. You're ready to give up. 
You know, you're thinking, man, I'm ready to throw in the towel. Maybe you want to quit your job. Maybe you want to quit your family. Maybe you want to you uh, uh, quit your, your, your responsibilities. I don't know, but, but there must be some pressure right now that you're facing. We all face pressure. Trust me, my pressures look nothing like your pressures, but it's pressure. Uh, but, but we don't have a spirit of give up. We have a spirit of come back. We serve a God of come back. No matter where you've been, no matter what you've gone through, God always has a comeback for every single person. Maybe you created a big mess in your life, man. You sinned, you fell, you did all kinds of crazy stuff, and you know that you are guilty as charged, but there's a comeback for you as well. Maybe you are going through some health issues right now. You have sickness, disease, and you're going through all kinds of physical pain. Guess what? Even you have a comeback. Every single person here has a comeback. Maybe you lost your business, your career just, com- just completely flopped, or, or your children are, are drug addicts, alcoholics, whatever. They have a comeback. Maybe your kids, your family is far away from Jesus. They want nothing to do with God. But let me tell you something. You serve a God of comeback, and your family's coming back. They're coming to Jesus. And we got we to gotta accept the fact that in the midst of our, our, our struggle, man, listen, the greatest cost to praise is when you're able to worship him when you're down. There is no greater cost of praise until you can be in the worst place in your life and yet you still decide to praise the Lord. Man, there's no greater shout than that. There's no greater praise than that. Let me tell you something. When you praise God in the midst of your challenges, man, you're teaching the angels that though I'm on earth and I'm going through all my struggles, let me tell you something. I have learned that in whatever state, whatever condition, I will praise God. And you know what? That that confuses the enemy, especially your haters. Man, when you know, when you got people talking junk about you and you're just like choosing not to have a horrible attitude, man, the haters hate more. It bothers them. Why? Because there's something different about you that they just can't, uh. And we all have moments like that where we just feel like we're down and we feel like we're discouraged and disappointed. That was a great word that Jessica brought us uh, during worship, but, but I have to remind myself, Mauricio, you can give up. Why? Because your life is linked up with someone's destiny. If Elevate Church was not here, many of you who are now uh, married to someone that you found in this church, uh, doing your ministry that God called you to. We have people that, that were in our leadership that have left now. Uh, a couple, Mie and Devin, are now doing their ministry in Japan You know, we got people in Africa. We got people in different parts of the world that are just going out. Why? Because my destiny was linked with their destiny. Your destiny is linked with someone else as well. And so we can't give up. Look at at the person next to you and say, you're not giving up. And if they say, well, I was never thinking of giving up, tell them, well, I'm just, I'm being proactive. I'm preparing you for the time you want to give up. Because you're all going to face that moment where, You might give up, but you won't. You're not going to give up. You're not going to quit. You're going to see every single purpose of God fulfilled in your life. You're going to see it happen. It's going to be amazing. And there's no faith worth having that has not been tested. That's what Peter said. There's no faith worth having that has not been tested. Read the book of Peter. Man, Peter was someone that, that denied God not once, three times. And Peter had a comeback. Come on, Jesus restored him back into the ministry even after he messed up. He denied Christ. Man, he even, he even started the cuss ministry. He started cussing at a little girl that said, oh, aren't you that guy that hangs with Jesus? And he went blankety, blank, blank, no. And so God will give every single person a comeback. Peter went from denial to winning 3,000 people to Jesus Christ in one meeting. God has your comeback. You're coming back. You're not staying there. It's seasonal. It's temporary. It's not forever. Rejoice, man. This is making you stronger. You're building godly character. Come on, it's refining you. As a matter of fact, our faith, Peter says, it should not only be tested by fire, but once it's tested by fire, it's going to come out like pure gold. Come on, your faith is 
worth much more than any gold on this earth. Your faith matters, but it must be tested in order for you to say, but God. Are you with me this morning? You sound like the Presbyterian church this morning. That's okay. I'll take it. I'll take, I'll take a few little amens. Amen? Yeah, yeah. I want you to go with me real quick to uh, go to uh, Genesis chapter 15. And I want you to park there. Just park at Genesis 15. And um, I can remember uh, last year's game. How many, how many like football here? Yeah, okay. I, my team, like it or not, it's Patriots. And I know we got a lot of Patriot haters in this church. That's okay. That's all right. And last year we did the whole uh, Super Bowl party here at the church. It was pretty awesome. But I can remember all the haters that were hating on me. And, uh, and, and, and you know what? It was an epic game because we were, we, were pretty, we were pretty down on our score. The scoreboard said it was three to like 20-something, right? On the scoreboard, we were like 25 points behind. And uh, we were down to the, like the last five minutes of the game, fourth quarter. And uh, I can remember everybody was like cheering and jumping up and down. And I had this, this, uh, uh, this, this statue of, of uh, Tom Brady with a football like this. And the guys were all coming up here and they're like picking their nose and doing all kinds of funny stuff with my statue of Tom Brady. And, 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 and they're laughing at me. And I'm in the back like game ain't over, game ain't over. But inside I'm like, <laughs> we're losing, we suck. You know, I was just like feeling like junk on the inside. But they were talking, but I just kept saying, hey, the, the, the game ain't over. There, there's still time on the clock. And, and you know what? I was trying to believe that, that we were going to have a comeback. But inside of me, I just felt like, man, we are over. It is done. It is finished. But there's something, there's something awesome. There's a, there's, there's, there's a great principle that you can learn from the game of football, any sport for that matter. There's, there's got to be some resilience to every single man and woman because here's the reality. The Bible says that we are to look forward to the prize that has been set before you. And, and if you read the New Testament, the Apostle Paul uses a lot of analogies with sports. But I want to show you uh, just a few clips of last year's uh, game of the Patriots and the Falcons. And, and it's not to be a hater on you. Um, and and to, don't, don't, don't. Relax, okay? I want you to take the principle of the, of the resilience because some of you right now, you're in your halftime and you're ready to give up and quit. And God's saying, no, you're not. You're going to push. You're going to press. You're going to seek me even more. You're going to see your, your best days are yet to be. Your best days are yet to come. You're going to see the greatest revival happen in your personal life. You're going to see the greatest blessings that are about to overtake you. Why? Because that is God's promise. But I want you to watch this and, and just watch the spirit of a man when they need to conquer at halftime. Watch this. Man, that's, what if the church was like that? What if, what if the church, in the midst of whatever challenge you're facing, listen, the Bible says life and death is in the power of your tongue. What are you speaking over your life? What are you saying about your situation? Come on, I know the scoreboard is telling you you're done, you're over, but what do you say? What did God say about that situation? You know what? You hear all this conversation happening. They're losing. But they're talking like they're winning already, right? They were using words like, man, there, there can be no fear. When you live in fear, man, you will fail. You will fail. Jesus said this. The Lord said this, that I did not give you that spirit of fear. I gave you a spirit of power. I gave you a spirit of love. And I gave you a spirit of a sound mind. Fear will paralyze you from ever moving yards. God wants you to move forward. God wants you to win, but you can't let fear. He says, no fear, no fear, no fear. Other statements was, man, we do is going to be a battle. I think so many of us, we start serving God and we think it's just going to be patty cake. No, it's a battle. We live in a world that has battles. You know, sometimes, you know what, life will throw you an avalanche. You never saw it coming but who said it was going to be a walk in the park? Who said it was going to be easy? You got to just tell yourself, you know what, man, my call, it's, it's worth the battle. I, I'm going to face some giants, but, but like David, I'm a giant killer because God is with me. Amen. Amen. Amen? I mean, they said other things like, come on, let's go, let's go. What if we just started pumping each other up like that? What if we remember the cause? Did you hear that one person said, hey, Brady, for your mom, for your mom, this is for your mom. Well, his mom was going through cancer. That was the first game she had made 
uh, through the whole football season because of her sickness. Let me tell you something. Once you know your cause, your purpose, your purpose will trump your pain. Your purpose will trump your pain. But when you don't know what your purpose is, let me tell you something. Life will just go ahead and throw you uh, uh, all kinds of waves. And, and here's what happens. You become double-minded. You know what double-minded means? It means that you're always lingering between two opinions. One opinion says, I can do it. The other one says, you know, I can't. Yes, I can do it. No, I can't. God's saying, hey, listen, I didn't, I didn't create a double-minded person. I want your yes to be yes, and I want your no to be no. I want you all in and don't linger between two opinions any longer you have to choose to say we're going to win I'm going to stop letting the scoreboard dictate my future yes you may be right now a three to 28 but guess what I'm coming up I'm coming forward I'm going to get up he says it's going to be hell of a story let's show them that we're going to we're going to work harder we're going to be tougher he said as a matter of fact let's do both we're going to work everything we're gonna be harder and tougher at the same time that's what God wants us to do I remember when I was going through the cancer I had to keep telling myself no man I'm coming out of this thing I'm not gonna stay here forever and every time the doctor come in in the midst of me saying something positive they would bring me another health issue and said you know what guess what now your lungs are filled with fluid and we can't do nothing with you and I was like what and I had to remind myself again no wait a minute by the stripes of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I am healed Lord you didn't bring me this far to let me down why would you bring me this far an atheist someone who hated you and 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 now I start serving you with all my life my heart my will my everything all for what for you to bring me to cancer like this is how far you brought me just for this no I'm gonna win I love other statements he says man you gotta believe you need laser focus listen some of us we focus more on our issues than we focus more on the outcome the outcome is going to be awesome. The issues will expand if that's all you focus on. If you're always focusing on the negative, it expands. If you're always saying, I suck, guess what? You suck more. If you're always saying, man, I'm no good, guess what? You'll always be no good. It's not because God's doing this. It's because death and life is in the power of your tongue. You got to start speaking what, what Philippians says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives me the strength to do it. You got to start speaking yourself or convincing yourself or talking yourself into your healing, your breakthrough, your blessing, instead of always talking yourself out of it. So many people talk themselves out of God's plan. So many. That's why we got a lot of quitters in the kingdom. There's so many quitters in the kingdom. Why? Because they talk themselves out of it. God, God gives a promise. He doesn't change. When God gives a word, he's not... He's not double-minded. When God says, I'm going to do this with your life, oh, God does it. He does it. And it may not make sense to you right now, but God does it. God is faithful to do that which he said. He who has begun a good work in you, he is faithful to finish it as well. God's going to finish what he started in you. Come on, but we got to step up. We got to get up. We got to stop laying on the ground and just moaning and groaning of what happened yesterday. Listen, what happened yesterday is right where it belongs. Yesterday. It was behind you. Guess what? Now we got to look forward. We got to look towards what the goal is. What's the plan? Where do you want to be? Where do you want to go? What do you want to accomplish? Come on. You got to start speaking life again. You got to stir yourself up in the things of God. And when you do that, things change. I promise you. We speak we speak or we think, we think 60,000 thoughts per day as humans. I wonder how many of them are negative. 60,000 thoughts a day is what every single one of us think. I wonder how many of them rejoice and give God the glory and give God praise. Or I wonder how many of them is agreeing with the enemy, with the devil. Because the enemy is constantly saying, you know what, you're no good. You'll never amount to anything. The enemy will bring shame on you, guilt, condemnation. The enemy will make you feel like, you know what, you're not worth it. Uh, uh, he works overtime. That's the game. The enemy is trying to win you. But guess what? Jesus already paid the price. And the highest cost of praise is being able to praise him when nothing good is happening. That's your shout. God is good, but he's not. Right now, it's not good. It's okay, but it's going to get good. Well, it's good right now, but it's not that good. Well, it's going to get gooder. Amen? 
And we're going to go from great to greater. Amen? We're going to go from best to bestest. Right? And so, but God needs cooperation. God needs the church to step up. If someone's going through something, man, we got to be the cheerleader of our brother. Why? My, listen, my life is linked with your destiny. And I know because Steve was a hater of God. But check this out. I kept loving him, kept loving him, kept serving him, kept serving him, kept loving him. Now, you know what? Uh, he's the leader of our prayer team ministry. This is the guy that hated people. What the heck? How does he lead the prayer team? Help me, Jesus. You know what? I, no, I'm not kidding you. I would talk to Steve like, hey, Steve. And he would just stare at me like this. I'm like, hey, Steve. Yeah, so how you doing, bro? Everything good? <laughs> All right, bro. <laughs> and I'd be like, dang, what a weirdo, right? <laughs> but, but then I'd pray for him like, God, do something with this guy because he's driving me nuts, right? <laughs> but, but, but check this out. But my, my life it was linked to his destiny, and God's not finished with him. And his life is linked to my destiny because God's not finished with me. God is not finished with you. God is not through with you. Felicia, your life is linked up to many destinies. And so to give up, to give in, to quit will damage a lot of people. You cannot, you cannot think that quitting is the answer. Quitting will never be the answer. Striving and pushing in a godly way, is going to always be the right answer. Amen? we got to push, push, push. Why? Man, it's a game. And in this game, there's some hits. And sometimes the hits, man, they leave you on the ground, and sometimes you're like a little bit just kind of in a daze. But guess what? you got to learn how to shake that off. David had to learn how to do this. Are you there already in Genesis 15? Okay, so let me read you this verse because I, you first you need to know that God made a covenant with you. He makes a covenant with his people. And here in the story of the context, he's talking to Abraham. And, and God is preparing Abraham for the future. And so God is preparing us. Listen, we have the Bible today. It's shocking how many people start freaking out or start questioning God about earthquakes, famines, uh, typhoons, uh, hurricanes. You're like, why is this happening? It's in the Bible. <laughs> it's like God already told us what was going to happen. It shouldn't be a shock. It's, it's part of the process it's, it's going to happen. Things aren't going to get better, people. They're not. But you know who gets better? You get better. You get stronger. You bring more change to people. The world is going to do exactly what it's going to do. It's going to continue to fall apart. Now, is that, does that mean I lose hope? No. I'm, more, I'm even more hopeful because the faster this earth is passing away, the quicker Jesus is coming back for me. Are you hearing me? Okay, so look at, the, look at this. Genesis 15, it says in verse 13 through 16, we're going to read. It says, then the Lord said to him, know for certain that 400 years, for 400 years, your descendants will be uh, strangers in a country, not their own, and they will be enslaved and mistreated there. All, already right there, Abraham is already hearing the word from the Lord that the Israelites would be under the power of who? Egypt, Pharaoh. Right? And so here, it, it wasn't a shock. It, it, it shouldn't have been like, oh, how did this happen? No, God said, it. here's what's going to happen. You're, you're going to be under the power and, 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 and the slavery of Pharaoh for 400 years. Nobody wants to hear that. Everybody wants to hear that it's going to be awesome. But guess what? I'm here to tell you, yes, it is going to be awesome. But there's going to be a price to pay for that awesomeness. You're going to have to go through some stuff if you want to go up. It's part of life. If you want to grow in stature as a child, you're going to have to go through some growing pains, right? You remember when you were a child, like, oh, my legs hurt, mom, my arms hurt. And then your parents would be like, Cállate, you're growing up. And yeah, That's what my, my mom did to me. Yeah, shut up. I'm not talking to you guys like that, but you know what I mean. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves. And afterward, everybody say an afterward. afterward. Come on, and afterward, they will come back. Come on, somebody. Afterward, afterward. Whatever it is you're facing, afterward, you're coming back. Yeah, you've been, you've been through the muck. You've been through the mire. You've been through some pain. You've been through some suffering. But afterward, you're going to come out, and you're going to come back. And I love it. And you're going to come back with great possessions. 
Come on, the Lord is going to bless you with every single trial, with every single pain, with every single suffering. There's always a blessing tied to it. I'm telling you, it's not a pain for no reason. Every pain has a blessing behind it. It always comes with a blessing. Listen, whether you like it or not, God is going to bless you because that's our God we serve. We serve a God of comeback, but we also serve a God who wants to bless you. He wants to promote you. He wants to advance you. But also, God wants to put you through the test. Why? Because he can't give you more than you can handle. So sometimes you're in school and you didn't even know it. You're in class and it's in session. And the test, whether you like it or not, you're going to have to take it. And guess what? If you fail, praise God that God has makeup tests every single day for us. We can make it up and make it up. You won't progress, but you'll make it up. That's the grace of God. Come on. He always has a comeback. That's what he wants to do. And so he says, hey, listen, and I will bring you with great possessions. You, however, will go to your ancestors in peace and be buried at a good old age. And be buried. In other words, he's telling them, hey, Abraham, not only am I going to allow you and your descendants, your children and your children's children to, to receive this, this blessings, and, and I'm warning you, there's going to be some attacks that come with these blessings. But you know what? I'm going to let you go back to your ancestors, all right, the people before him. And you will go to the grave, right? When you die, you will die in a good old age. Huh? So if there's a good old age, there must be a what? A bad old age, right? If there's good, there must be what? bad so God is making a covenant a promise that man you're gonna you're gonna grow into a good old age right I want to be able to have a good old age uh, not dealing with physical illnesses right I want to be able to to come to a good old age where I'm not worried about my retirement I want to be able to come to a good old age where I have the the physical capacity to serve God that's a good old age right not having to worry. Not, I want to come to a good old age where no one ever has to put me in a retirement home. Why? Because, man, my mind and my heart and my life is so well intact with God that, man, the way I'm going to go is I'm going to go to sleep and wake up in heaven. That would be a good old age, right? Come on, God promises 120 years. That's a covenant. That's a covenant. God wants to give us a life with a good old age with health and healing and strength. Come on, God wants to give you a life filled with, with, with his blessings and, and, and for you to help others prosper even as your soul prospers, right? That's a good old, this is a covenant. So if those of you that are probably already in your 50s and higher, I'm telling you, I know where the attack always comes. It always comes on your retirement and how, how soon you're going to die. Those thoughts come. You start thinking cray-cray stuff. Fear comes to grip you. Fear comes and tells you you're not going to make it. You're, you're, no one's going to be there to take care of you. No one's going to provide for you. You're going to be too old. You're not going to have strength to keep working. All those thoughts come to people, but even young people, young people that are already out of college and, and they thought that they would be so much further. And now they think, my God, this is the lot of my life. I went to college. I, I went to school. I, I'm in more debt. I'm in debt up to my eyeballs. Man, I don't see no fruit in my life. Well, guess what? You're going to come to a good old age. You're going to see the best days are about to come. But you got to start speaking life into your circumstance. you got to speak life. you got to tell yourself every single day, come on, man, you're going you're gonna to win today. You're gonna, I called my staff this morning. I told them, man, listen, today we're going to win at Elevate Church because we have a full day today. we got three services, and then we have Elevate Family Night tonight. That is going to be There's going to be hundreds and hundreds of people here, but we're going to win. We're going to win. I'm already speaking life to them, man. We're going to win. We're going to conquer. It's going to be awesome. Man, people are going to get saved. People are going to get touched. God's going to do amazing things here tonight. Why? Because that's what I truly believe that we can do. You got to tell yourself every day, man, we're going to win. You might, you might be losing. Stop letting the, the, the scoreboard tell you or dictate, man, the future that God already has for you. Stop limiting yourself by your vision. And start accepting the vision that God has for your life. His vision is unlimited. Your vision is very much limited. Stop seeing things through your lens and start asking God, Lord, enlighten my eyes to see the things that you're going to do through my life. When will you start believing for the best for your life? Huh? When? It's time. 
It's time, church. Believe. Get up. Let's go. Come on. We're going to have a hell of a story. Man, people are going to hear your sermon and be like, dang, how'd you do that? And you're going to be like, man, only God. Only God. Let me take you to one more verse. Go with me to uh, 1 Samuel 30. Quickly, quickly. I'm almost done. This is a good verse because uh, David. David was a man after God's own heart, but David, uh, you know, though he had many great victories, let me tell you something, uh, for you people that are very uh, emotionally driven, emotions are a blessing, but they can be a curse as well. Uh, if you're always led, you know, like a roller coaster by your emotions, but David was always an emotional wreck. He always, if you read the whole book of Psalms, all the different songs he wrote were very emotional. The things he said were always emotional. One moment, he was praising God. The next moment, he was saying, oh, how he was just falling apart and wasn't going to make it. But then he would come back and encourage himself back in God. But in this context of the story, he just got back with his, with his army from defeating the Philistine army. And so check this out. They're all like walking together. They're, they're you know, chest bunting and they're excited, high fine, like, yeah. But guess what they get back to? They get back to pain. Look, so David and his men came to the city. And there it was, burned with fire. And their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. Dang. Dang. No more. So they were fatigued. Have you ever been in a place of fatigue because you've been crying so much because of the pain you've been experiencing? Have you ever been in that place where you're constantly sleeping more than usual? Come on, where you'd rather go to bed than to think one more thought. Have you ever been in that place where all of a sudden you went from, from getting victory over alcohol to where now you're finding yourself drinking a little bit of wine? And then from wine, you're going into uh, some hard liquor or beers. And all of a sudden, you're defaulting back to the old person that you used to be when God created you by design. You start doing things that you never did before. Why? Because you're letting defeat overcome you. Jesus said, you are the head and not the tail. You are above and you're not beneath. Come on, you'll be blessed when you come in and you'll be blessed when you go out. David was in a place of despair that the people wept until they had no more power to weep. Look at the next verse. Keep going, guys. Now David was greatly distressed, discouraged, disappointed for the people spoke of what? Just imagine that. The same people he led are the same people that are turning against him. Listen, don't trip out when people that you have been on the journey with start doing things to hurt you. Don't trip out when you start seeing people leave you, talk about you, distract you from God's purpose. It's going to happen. I've been doing this for 21 years. I've been in ministry for many years. I've been a part of mega church and small church. And listen, and it happens in every church. People trip. But look, so they spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. And every man for his sons and his daughters. But David, look at this, but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. No one is going to encourage you the way you are going to be encouraged in the Lord. Nobody. I don't care who's in your life. I, I, listen, I have a great power climate around me. I got some great people around me. But not even they can encourage me the way my father can encourage me. No one can encourage me the way Jesus encourages me. So David is hearing all this. They want to stone him. They want to hurt him. The people that he loves, the people that he serves, the people that he was willing to give his life for, now want to hurt him. What a foul spirit, right? But David, David, as he encouraged himself in the Lord, he got the spirit of, I won't give up. I won't give in. No matter how much these people hate me now, I'm going to press. I'm going to fight. I'm going to be the model and the example of God. And you know what he does? He grabs all the men that were complaining, and he says, let's go to battle. So they go to the Amalekites who took their family and their children. And check this out. David had a huge army. And if you really understand the Bible, if you read it to, in its full context, the army is going with him. 
And as they're going with him, he loses men at every point. Men at every point. When he gets to the place of losing half his soldiers, they said to him, we can't go no more. We can't go any further. We're tired. There are people that are in your life for a season, and then there are people in your life for a reason. It happens. It happens. But you got to choose what kind of person am I? Are you seasonal or are you a reason? And the other half said, we'll go with you, David. And they went, and check this out, they conquered all right. But while the others were too busy complaining and whining and saying we can't, and they gave in and they gave up, David would stop at every point because the temptation to quit will always be around you, and it's called people. People will encourage you sometimes to quit. Maybe you should just quit that job. Maybe you should just leave that person. Maybe you should just go ahead and just cut those people out. But let me tell you something. But when you're a person that encourages themselves in the Lord, the Lord will give you the direction. The Spirit of God will sustain you when you're going through a weak moment in life. The Spirit of God will never tell you, okay, go ahead and quit. No, the Spirit of God will say, let's rise up because I'm building character in you. Let's rise up because I'm building something on the inside of you that you can't see right now. But this is preparing you for what I'm about to do with you and for you in the future. And so David, David with all his strength said, you know what, I'm not going to be like them. I'm going to encourage myself in the Lord. And guess what? And he did. He not only recovered every wife, every son, every daughter. The Bible says that he not only came back with possessions, but he even came back with the enemy's great possessions. What you have lost, God will give you back with interest. With interest. You'll be like Job. Job lost his health. Job lost his family. Job lo lost his, his business, his finances. He lost everything. See, the devil's greatest plot is for you to curse God. Job did not curse God, not once. As a matter of fact, he began to take the word I told you. The praise that costs the most is the praise that can give him a shout when you're down on the floor. And Job, the Bible says, and he got more than he had before. And his last days were greater than his former days. Your last days are going to be better. It's a promise. It's a covenant. Your best days, your best days. I want you to just tap someone lightly and just say, your best days are on the way. Come on, mean it. Your best days are on the way. Your best days, your best days, your best hour, your best season. Come on, you're going to keep going. You're going to keep going. Stop waiting for someone to come to you and encourage you. Listen, I don't want to be the person that says, my children encourage me, my family encourage me, my friends encourage me. No, I want to say, the Spirit of the Lord encouraged me. Come on, because sometimes you're waiting for someone to encourage you, but you're going to wait for a long time. So you might as well start learning. Okay, Lord, it's me and you, man. Let's rock this game. Yeah. Huh? Let's rock this, God. I encourage myself and you. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. I have this. I got this because you got me. Look at last verse and we're closing. It says, Psalm 46, verse 1 through 3. Here's what David wrote. He said, God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in trouble. Come on, when you're in trouble, he's your ever-present help. He's always present. See, when you're not in trouble, you don't need God. That's why God loves it when we're in trouble because the more trouble you're in, the more God you need. And then it just becomes part of life and you always need God. When you're in trouble and when you're not in trouble, he's good like that. And he says, therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, he's saying, man, God is my everlasting help in time of need. Amen. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.